What's up guys, welcome back to another video, I hope you're doing well today, and on first glance it, it might look like I'm riding a, a mountain bike here, but it is actually the Sauron bike in MX Bikes released by Drizzle Atomic. Now, I've not really seen anyone be using these at all, and I don't really know how public knowledge it is that they've been out, but they are on MXB mods, you know, so I don't think they're like ripped or anything like that. Now, the model itself is is very, very pi like pitch black, uh, there's not much in the way of shading, so you can't you can't see too much, it just looks like I'm... I'm, I'm riding midnight, but uh, I thought it would be nice to see how it handles a Supercross track because if anybody does remember, and during the last Supercross season, I somehow managed to uh, get a win on the altar in, in a normal race. Uh, I think I was just very, very fortunate. I got the whole shot and just managed to hold on. And to be fair, that one round was the one round where you basically had to double your way around the entire track. It was a little bit, a uh, little bit boofed, and I think even even Stone knows the scaling was a bit, a bit weird on that one. Uh, but I'm going to see how the Suron compares just to the Alta. I know they're very, very different bikes. They're both made for very different purposes. But you know what? They're both electric. They both have got knobbly tires, and they can both ride in dirt. So we're going to see how it goes. Now I've put the mapping on this to map mode number three. You get mappings one, two, and three for this. I which I believe is the fastest. Um, it's not like the auto where it's got like overclocked and stuff and it's really obvious. So I was just doing a little experimenting before I started recording. And in my personal opinion, I think map three is the fastest one. Um, it, straight off the bat, you know, in terms of top speed and things like that, it's, it's definitely no comparison to the auto. But I'm hoping that maybe it will make up for it in handling and acceleration. Because I feel like even on overclock settings, the auto really doesn't just doesn't pick up too well which is really strange so like from a dead stop it's not too bad um i mean i managed to get a bloody hole shot on it for crying out loud but if you was to take it on a super cross track like this and try accelerating out of a corner to hit a triple for example it just it feels like it's just got no oomph whatsoever even on like really short gearing oh i think i can triple onto that yeah even short gearing even with like the most aggressive mapping on it's a very very difficult bike to use now that, that might change i don't think i've used the alter since we had updated oem tires um, we haven't got updated tires on this bike obviously because they're, they're not included in all that we've just got standard mid softs but whatever tires we have got on i'm not sure if drizzles made them extra grippy at all i mean i can feel the back end sliding in the corners a little bit which i personally am a fan of i i enjoy that i feel we should always have that little bit of slip under throttle it just gives that sense of Realism, I suppose, because realistically, how often are you getting perfect traction, banging on the throttle coming out of corner, IRL? Not, not very. But, oh God, I'm actually, I'm, I'm quite shocked so far. I didn't expect to be getting over these jumps as well as I am, because I, I played, I used this bike probably about a month or so ago now, because I had a video idea in mind, but it just never, never came to fruition. I think I was riding it on uh, round twelve of the ARL season, you know, the uh, Fox uh, 2 part of Raceway, and it just felt so bad, you know, it was so, so slow, so I just ended up never using it, but I thought I'd give it another attempt today, see how it goes, even though you probably can barely see anything on your screen, I just can't, I can't believe how dark it is, a little bit of shading might be nice, and if I'm, I'm not a uh, designer or a graphics person by any means, but there are a few things I've picked up over years, which is never to use absolute black when you're adding textures or anything in Photoshop because it just becomes like Vanta Black and it just absorbs everything and loses a lot of detail. Uh, and I mean, that was always what people would say to me back in the sim days if I'd ever I'd try and make myself some graphics, even on the side plates and front plates if you was on a 250 and they're black, just never, never go, never go full, full uh, black. Always make it slightly more towards the greyer side. So it's got a little bit of, a little bit of something in it. Let's get back into here. I'm very, very fortunate actually. That this is probably one of the easiest whoop sections in the entire game. Very, very easy. I'm pretty sure you could go through there on a, on a pit bike and have no problems. Uh, this track is, I think I mentioned, St. Louis 2020, and it is the, uh, I'll say like park slash forest version. I can't remember exactly what he named it. Um, but there is another version of this, which is the actual race day version, which is in a full stadium, full objects, and it looks absolutely incredible. Uh, but I think I, I just, I like this version as well. It just feels a bit more like backyard private test tracky oh that was nice through that section so it's, it's pretty capable it, it can do a thing or two not just don't want to keep over jumping these jumps here because they're actually quite small i think 
Reeves is probably a, a bit of an advocate for the whole one-to-one -one scaling. Like, like myself, I do enjoy it. But the only downside is when you do get one-to-one -one scaling a lot on MX bikes, it sometimes makes it a little bit too easy, you know? I want to really try and step on to that jump there. And look how slow we're going through it, Jesus Christ. Uh, and I, oh god, I almost stepped all the way over it. And it feels like, obviously I've got stock suspension, I've not changed anything like that, but it feels very, very uh, springy, which is quite nice. I mean, pretty damn perfect for Supercross, get you bouncing up and over all the jumps. And oh, here's where, here's the part of the video where I probably offend some people. I don't understand. I, I've been seeing so many like YouTube shorts and TikToks and things like that of people riding these just to wheelie down the road. Like I don't, I don't get it, you know, I mean, just just buy a bloody road bike. I, I, I mean, to be fair, I don't know what the exact purpose of this bike is for, like what Saron are designing them for and to be used for originally, but it just makes me cringe a little bit. And I don't know why, it's just it's just not my thing. If that is your thing, I do apologise, but obviously you got to understand, it's, it's not for everybody. I just find it so, so weird, people rocking up in like full motocross kit just to do a wheelie down the road. I, just, I don't I don't understand it. I don't think I'd ever understand that crowd, to be fair. I am someone who, even from a very, very young age, has been brought up around riding motocross bikes on motocross tracks rather than on the road. But, you know, some people aren't, aren't quite that fortunate. If, you, if you're from a, a different area, if you've not got tracks near you, then I can understand you wanting to ride something else elsewhere. And then just ride a road bike or get a, a moped or something like that rather than a motocross bike. And I love, the, if anybody's ever been on Facebook, uh, marketplace and you're looking at motorbikes on there it's one of the funniest things in the world it's like oh yeah fresh, freshly rebuilt got two hours on it total starts every time uh, has a, a pink power band in it <laughs> full, full chrome blah 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 it's so bloody funny reading it and you have a look on it and the bike's just been absolutely ragged and <laughs> got bald tyres where it's been burnt out on the road and oh god it's such a laugh I, I even I would even advise even if you're you're bored and need something to do if you're not looking for bikes in general just go on the facebook marketplace and have a look there are some very very weird and wonderful posts on there uh, they always always give me a, a funny time especially when they start mentioning uh power bands and every single one without fail if it's a bit of a rough looking one you can guarantee that it will say something like wheelies in every gear and starts first kick every time it's just it's just like i don't know why they do it it's bloody hilarious to me I thought that was always an ongoing joke at, at motocross that we'd have between our friendship group. Oh, that back break! Uh, you know, I'm having a bit more fun on this than I thought I would do. I thought this would be a little bit more painful than it is, but it doesn't seem too bad. Now, obviously, being an electric bike, you can't choose how much fuel or charge you have in it to make the bike lighter at all, even though, I mean, I'm sure having less charge, electricity doesn't weigh anything at all, uh, so it wouldn't make any difference. Uh, but one thing that I've never never really understood that maybe some of you guys smarter than me or some of you guys in the know might understand but if we take this bike and we take the Alta for example you can see at the top left it's still got like fuel left that is just an estimation for the game before I run out of charge on the bikes for example is the game smart enough to know that uh, so let me backtrack a bit sorry so on a fuel bike if I start with let's say six litres of fuel and then I run the bike and I get way down to maybe two litres. The bike handles differently and is faster on two litres than it is on six litres. You know, you've got less fuel in it, the bike's lighter, turns easier, goes faster, makes sense. Is the game smart enough to realise that this bike doesn't have fuel in it, therefore it will handle the same the entire time? Or when the battery gets lower, does the game think that it's lower on fuel and in turn make the bike lighter, make it turn easier, make it accelerate faster? It's just something that I've never known, and I should probably just ask the OEM guys because they'd probably give me quite a straightforward answer, but I like a bit of YouTube engagement, I like seeing your guys' thoughts, and it's just seeing how MX Bikes does things like that. Now, I'm in a bit of a uh, limbo period at the moment because I am going away on Sunday the 29th for Sunday the 30th, whichever day the Sunday is, is the day after MX Bikes and Nations. So what I've done in preparation for this is I've pre-recorded so many videos. Like I want to say I'm a good seven or eight videos ahead so I can take an entire week off just to uh, go up north, spend it with my girlfriend, have a nice time, not worry about anything. But whilst I'm recording these, so I'm, I'm recording this very early on Thursday. I've no, no idea what day Thursday is, but very early Thursday before I'm Xbox Nation. So quite a ways away from you actually seeing it. There's discussions about 
uh, Bay Tray team being released really, really soon. And I'm I'm really scared because I feel like it's going to happen as soon as I go away. So I'm not going to be able to cover it at all, which is going to be frustrating because those videos always do really, really well. I think I managed to get like four videos out of Beta 17 and all those dramas when that released. Uh, but it'll, it'll just be my luck. You know, I've been waiting on it for this long and it'll come out whilst I'm gone. But if that is the case and you're seeing this and Beta 18 is already out, how is it? Let me know your thoughts. I mean, I'll be trying it when I get back from being away. Um, you probably would have seen a bunch of videos in the last few days. Even just like playing with Charlie, for example, where we talk about what's going to be in Beta 18 because I was, it was recorded before Beta 18 came out. So um, I'm quite nervous. Maybe I'll s send him a special request not to do it. Um, but part of me feels like it's either going to come out before, just before I go away, like the day before. Maybe maybe the day that I'm trying to grind bloody the new Call of Duty or something like that. Um, or it'll come out just as I leave because he has been made aware about MX Bikes and Nations. Uh, Rube just told him and Insane has told him, so I think he's avoiding doing it on the Saturday. So he's either going to do it the day before and get everybody in their panic stations trying to learn the game a little bit, or he's going to do it straight after, which, which I'll be away for. So it's, it sucks to me, me, but it happens. You can't have everything you want in life. You know, I've, I feel like I've been quite quite lucky to be in the position I'm in, just to be in, in like the development chat and things like that and know all the ins and outs, but he's still, he's still a very cryptic man. He will never give you a definitive... Uh, time or date or anything when it's going to release it will just release uh, out of nowhere so you have to be prepared for it um, but I think if you've kind of been watching me playing here in the background I've not really had much drama I've had the occasional crash here or there where maybe I've got a little bit overconfident tried scrubbing too hard or tried jumping a jump further I think it's a very very capable bike I wouldn't say that it is quite on the level of the altar I think the altar is still still king still supreme but I think as well, I kind of expected that going into this, you know, the altar is more built for motocross where the Suron isn't really. I think, I know Drizzle Atomic, the guy that released this, he is 100% more of a, uh, a bike life wheelie guy anyway. He's, if he's released uh, one or two wheelie maps as well and all sorts of mods and things like that. And I know he does YouTube videos on, on the bike life scene. So it's to be expected. Uh, maybe at some point in the future I'll hop on and try and do some wheelies on this bloody thing and see how that goes. Um, but overall, I think that'll do it for me for this video. If you want to download the bike, I'll put it in the description for you. It's, it's on MXB mod, so it's nothing dodgy or suspicious at all. And if you want to download this track as well, I'll try and find the track link for you because it's a really, really good one. One of... Um, one of my favourite Supercross tracks, I'd say. One that I forget about now and then, but I was just scrolling through the track list before recording this, thinking, oh, what can I what can I do for a video today? And then I saw it, I was like, you know what? That's it, I'm playing this one. So I'll leave, I'll leave you a link to this and the uh, the race day version as well if you want a full-on stadium and objects and such. And that'll do it for me. If you've enjoyed the video, please do drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. I'd really, really appreciate it. Have a lovely rest of the day, whatever it is that you're up to. I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.